Okay, my theory is that some things in the Bible look way different than we think. So in this video, I'm going to use AI to create scenes from the Bible that I always wanted to see because I thought they were cool. And hopefully it'll look better than this. So let's do some AI Bible stories. But one word of warning, it's going to get weirder as we go along. So don't skip to the end. It will scare you. We need to get warmed up first. So my dad's a pastor. I grew up in the church and I always wanted to see these things, interesting people or situations in the Bible. But I was growing up in the 80s, and so all we had were these cheesy flannel graphs <laughs> or really bad Christian movies. Also, when I was younger, my main passion was visual art and drawing. Later, I got into music more. But man, this AI art thing is like a dream come true. Robots can help you draw now. I read that each of these AI companies is spending like $3 million a month in computing power, so we can just mess around with AI for free. It also might be the end of the world, but let's, let's try it anyway. Okay, let's start with something easy, David and Goliath. Um, there are real giants in the world, of course. Andre the Giant. Yao Ming, but I think Goliath might have been bigger than the giants we have nowadays. So I think a good place to start is let's just type the Bible. Let's just type in the passage from the Bible. I'm doing all of this in mid-journey and I'll show you at the end how to do the exact prompts if you want to do some similar things. Let's see what it does. Okay, cool. Not amazing. Kind of reminds me of the flannel graphs from the 80s. <laughs> So this is a weird moment. Now the AI is referencing the flannel graphs from Sunday school and making art equally as cheesy. We need to tweak the prompts. I think one thing we need to do is we need to figure out what some of these weights and measures mean. So the passage says, there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. Turns out that's nine feet tall. That's way bigger than Andre the Giant. He had a helmet of bronze on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. Turns out that's 10 feet long. Wow, that's a pretty big spear. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, which is 16 pounds. A spearhead, the weight of a bowling ball. Dang. And his shield bearer went before him. He stood and shouted at the ranks of Israel. All right, so let's see what it does if we just change the weights here. And I'll type that in. Okay, now we get this. Wow. I think that probably is a nine foot guy. I don't know where they got the kid in this shot. Not sure where that came from. Let's see if this reflects the accurate size. No, that's way bigger than nine feet. Here is Goliath if he was 90 feet tall and either his head was backwards or the torso was on his back. I don't, I don't know how that works. Okay, we've gone off the, <laughs> we've, we've gone off the rails somehow. All right, I'm gonna keep simplifying the prompts and at the end, I'll show you how to do all the prompts so that in, in case you wanna recreate some of these. All right, uh, this is getting a little more realistic, but not feeling it. These characters look kind of like Goliath, but there's a giant creature in the background. <laughs> Where did that come from? Hey, they got the helmet of bronze right, but wow, that's a huge giant. Okay, I think Goliath could have looked like that, and that would be pretty scary if he did. One thing I really love, there was this old movie about David and Goliath called King David, and the David and Goliath scene was amazing, and I wanted to find that old film vibe, and so there's this prompt you can use called Kodachrome. It's like an old Kodachrome camera, and this is what it came up with. Whoa. Now that is kind of like what I imagine the size difference between David and Goliath. That's awesome. That could have been like Goliath and his shield bearer right there. That's pretty nuts. I don't know how I feel about this so far, but how would I feel if I was Goliath? Okay, let's talk about David in the story, all right? Scholars think he's about 15 years old when this battle happened. At this point, David's too young to be in the military, so he's only there because he was sent to bring his older brothers food and provisions. But there's this cool part of the story where David gets there and he goes to tell the king that he's going to fight the giant. So the king is King Saul and he tells King Saul, I'm going to fight the giant. And King Saul says, you can't because you're just a kid and Goliath is a giant warrior 
who has been fighting and killing people ever since he was a kid. So you can't go fight him. But David says, no, he's insulting God. Somebody needs to fight him. I'm going to fight him. When I was shepherding my dad's flock, one time I killed a bear, one time I killed a lion. Now, with God's power, I'm going to kill the giant. Saul's like, okay, go. But you need some armor. So he gives him this heavy bronze armor. It's way too big for David. He gives him a big sword. It's way too big. David's like, I haven't practiced in this. I can't wear this. So he takes it off and he ends up going out there without any armor, without any sword, with just a slingshot, whatever he wore as a shepherd, and five stones. And I love this moment trying to imagine that moment where he's talking to the king. He puts on the armor. He realizes this isn't going to work. I'm going to have to, I'm just going to have to go with just God's power and a slingshot. Can you imagine being a teenager? You're 15 years old and you're walking out onto this battlefield with nothing but your normal clothes, a slingshot, some stones, but you have so much faith in God. You just know God will win the battle. So far I've noticed that humans are better than AI at showing emotion. The AI can show a lot of different things like photorealism and things that are hard to imagine. But if you look back at the famous artwork about the scene, David and Goliath, a lot of it is about capturing the moment, the emotion in the moment of what it must have been like when Goliath is there shouting at the ranks of Israel or the moment after David kills Goliath. So one thing you can do is you can take a piece of fine art and have the AI reference that. I love this old drawing that inspired these. These are new pieces that the AI created. But you can see how the human art inspired more emotion in these. Humans can do the emotion part better because it's like Casey Neistat says, AI has no soul. But we can imagine what it would be like to be a 15 year old and to be in a situation that scary. I have two takeaways from this really quick. One is that the AI seems to have about as much trouble wrapping its head around the Bible as I do. These Bible stories are hard to imagine sometimes, and even robots are having a hard time imagining them. The other thing is that the Bible is deep. So St. Jerome, who was the guy who translated the Bible into Latin, he said that scriptures are shallow enough for a babe to come and drink without fear of drowning and deep enough for theologians to swim without ever touching the bottom. I think we've seen that today. Story of David and Goliath, a kid can understand certain parts of it, and then there's other parts of it we can't even imagine. All right, I told you we, we would get weird at the end. We're gonna go to another part of the Bible that talks about giants, the Nephilim. Okay, check this out. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days when the sons of God came down to the daughters of man and they bore children to them. Let's see what AI thinks of the Nephilim. Okay, whoa, wow, that's weird. Orlando Bloom, I don't know. Okay, this is scary. Ah, no way. Now these are cool. I think where it ended up is cool. If you wanna see more explorations of the Bible using AI, check out this video. Here's a sneak peek. If you try to get AI to imagine Michael the Archangel, you get this. 